Hi folks, this is Pastor David Childers. I'm privileged to pastor Peaceway Christian Center here in Las Vegas, Nevada. My wife and I started this church, can you believe it, in 1985. <laughs> That's last century. And we have been pastoring here for over 35 years. God has called us to this ministry. Today we need your help in prayers and also in finances. You see, we are called to, to be a spiritual lighthouse to the lost of Las Vegas. And uh, we are reaching those that desperately need Jesus in one of the most difficult cities in America. So we need your financial support to help us continue. Continue producing these online sermons and continue with the many ministries of this church. If you could send us your support through Venmo, our username, username in Venmo is Peaceway Christian Center. If you'd like to send us a check, please do so by making the check out to Peaceway Christian Center and send it to 7570 Peaceway, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89147. Help us to continue to minister in the spiritually neediest city in America. Well, God bless you. We hope to hear from you soon. Now let's enjoy this week's sermon as we hear the word of the Lord. Hi, this is Pastor David Childers coming to you from Las Vegas, Nevada. It's been my privilege to pastor at Peaceway Christian Center for 35 years. And uh, this sermon is for January the 10th, 2021. And the sermon title is, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Jesus loves sinners, and I guess that includes everybody. <laughs> Let's read Mark 2, 13 through 17. Once again, Jesus went out beside the lake. A large crowd came to him, and he began to teach them. As he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, Jesus told him. And Levi got up and followed him. And verse 15, while Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the teachers of the law, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with the sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said to them, It's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. And then in John 15, 12 through 15, My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. Well, folks, this sets a biblical foundation for our message today. Let's look at Mark 12, 13. He went out again beside the sea. Jesus had been in Capernaum which was located on the northwest shore of the Sea of Galilee. Well, people start running to him again, and all the crowd was coming to him, the word says. The tense uh, of this word is that the crowd is building, and he was teaching them. The idea is that he kept teaching them, and that we know from 114 that he was proclaiming the gospel of God. The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. And in the midst of all the people, Jesus noticed a person. He saw Levi. Let's look at verse 14. As he passed by, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus. Our first point for today's sermon is this. Jesus is on a mission wherever he goes looking for sinners looking for sinners that would be transformed by him. So crowds of people are everywhere. 
and yet he locks on to Levi. Now Levi's parents had a lot of hope for him because he was named after one of the sons of Jacob. It was from the tribe of Levi that the priesthood was descended. Levi would have been raised to fulfill some kind of religious responsibility. We make judgments based upon personal parents, but Jesus saw something more. In Matthew 9, 9, we read about this same encounter with Levi. He saw a man. He saw a man. Jesus sees past the sin and sees the possibilities of a servant. So he can tell Levi is unsatisfied and searching for something of significance. When Jesus looks at people, he sees potential. He knows you're a mess, but he also knows, like Levi, that you matter to him. He sees what no one else can see. He still sees guilt and shame, but he also sees redemption. He also sees maturity. He has plans and purposes for you. Others may remind you of your past, but Jesus forgives us of our past and he sees our future. Well, sitting at the tax booth, Levi was a tax collector, which was another saying, another way of saying that he was the scum of the earth. That's how they viewed tax collectors, the scum of the earth. He had purchased a tax franchise, which allowed him to charge taxes on anyone walking by his tax booth. He was required to send in a certain amount of taxes to Rome, but he would charge whatever he wanted and keep the extra as personal profit. As a result, tax collectors like Levi often became very wealthy. Capernaum was on the caravan route between the east and the west, so it was the perfect place to set up a tax booth. He collected on imports and exports, on bridges and roads and harbors. He would tax the number of axles on a wagon, the number of legs on a donkey, <laughs> and charge a pedestrian tax if someone was out taking a walk. He also charged taxes on the number of fish the fishermen caught. So here's what tax collectors were known as dishonest, disqualified, disloyal, detested, disgraced, and defiled. Let's take dishonest first. They were known to overcharge people. And when someone couldn't pay, uh, when someone couldn't pay, they would be given a high interest loan. They took bribes from the rich and extorted the poor. These guys were terrible people. Next, they were disqualified. Tax collectors were not allowed to give testimony as witnesses because no one trusted them. In fact, their tithes weren't even accepted. By the way, we accept tithes from everyone, just to let you know. Uh, the next thing is he was disloyal. Even though he was Jewish, he was considered a traitor because he worked for the hated Romans. He had turned his back on his family, his nation, and his God. Next, he was detested. Tax collectors were classified or classed with murders, murderers, robbers, and uh, only they were considered to be worse. Jewish people despised them more than they despised Roman officials or soldiers. And sometimes children would come up and spit at tax collectors, encouraged to do so by their parents. Well, they're also he's also disgraced. By extension, Levi's family would also have been ostracized from the community. He was a letdown to his family and the source of shame. Defiled, he was considered an outcast and was excommunicated from the synagogue. According to the rabbis, there was no hope for a loser like Levi. Amazingly, Jesus called the scum of the earth Levi a guy to be a world changer. So here's our first point recap. Jesus is on a mission wherever he goes. He's looking for sinners that will be transformed. Well, now on to our second point. In order to be a friend of Jesus, we must follow him. 
After looking at Levi, Jesus issued a very short command. Two words, follow me. And this is in the present tense. So he was saying something like this, be following me or be following with me. Alan Carr uh, gives us a few lessons from this passage that are worth pondering. Here it is. No one is beyond hope. Jesus knows how to reach our wayward loved ones. Jesus sees the hidden potential in the lives of the lost. It is impossible to know what's happening in a person's heart. What Levi does is startling. He doesn't put on a sweater and declare a different allegiance, but instead he rose and followed him. He immediately obeys. He gets up and he goes. He's just not giving intellectual assent, but he makes a decision of his will. And then he moves physically. And Luke 5.28 provides additional insight. And leaving everything, he rose and followed him. And this is in the original tense. The sentence reads this way. And he left all, rose up, and followed him. And he left all and rose up and followed him. This is amazing. Levi left everything even before he got up and went with Jesus. There needs to be a leaving before there can be a rising. He believed and then he bolted. <laughs> Here's a question. What have you left behind to follow Jesus? Is there something you're still holding on to that may explain a lack of joy? One pastor said it like this. The freest people are those who've learned to leave things behind. I'm reminded of Jim Elliott, uh, the young man that was martyred for Christ in the 50s at the age of 28. Jim Elliott is famous for saying, bring that back down. He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain that which he cannot lose. Jesus put it a different way in nine, Luke 9, 62. No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. So Levi's response was wholehearted. He totally made a break with his tax business. He didn't st uh, stoop down to gather up shekels or tidy up his books. He left it all. He got up and he followed Christ. So the four who had followed Jesus were fishermen. They could go back to fishing. And they eventually did. But for Levi, his work as a tax collector was now over. Someone else would quickly take his place. <laughs> Reminds me of the story of the chicken and the pig. The chicken and the pig were walking down the road together. They passed a sign for a local diner advertising its breakfast special. Ham and eggs, $12.95. The chicken said, that's our whole contribution to society, breakfast food. The pig replied, for you, it may be a contribution. For me, it's total commitment. <laughs> for Levi, it was total commitment. And there were a lot of people surprised that day. The crowd was confused. The disciples were dumbfounded. And Levi couldn't believe that Jesus was calling him. Levi would no doubt have hit these guys, these first four guys up for taxes on their fish. Can you imagine the tension between the fishermen and the tax collector? <laughs> well, one pastor shared this. He said he had a large number of police officers and I think it was uh, correction officers who attended the church. Uh, these men and women would tell the pastor that it was difficult for them to see someone they had arrested previously come to the church. <laughs> and one time a new believer was baptized and one of the law enforcement friends called the pastor and told him that he was struggling because he knew the person's past. And this pastor shared this passage with him that the Lord loves to put people with different past on the same team. Pretty powerful. Well, our third point is this. As friends of Jesus, 
He wants us to focus on winning sinners without joining them in their sin. John MacArthur writes, the religious hated Jesus for condemning good people and they hated him for loving bad people. <laughs> well, let's take a look, look at the epilogue for Levi. Here's the epilogue. If you would have asked Levi at what point he thought Jesus could use him as an evangelist, he would have said, that's a good one. <laughs> that's funnier than a flat tax. <laughs> I imagine Levi brainstorming and asking himself, what do I do well? And uh, the idea comes to mind, but he blows it off because he thinks, I throw great parties, but I'm a Christ follower now. I probably shouldn't be doing that anymore. And then it hits him. What if I had a party with a purpose? What if all my IRS buddies came and what if I invited Jesus and the guys? What if Jesus rubbed shoulders with my irreligious friends and what if some spiritual conversations took place? Boy, that would be cool. I see three important factors that would help us focus on sinners. Look at verse 15. As he reclined at the table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners were reclining with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. The word recline is used twice in this verse. It refers to the practice of lying on your side, leaning on your elbow with your head by the table. It's the posture that people took when they settled in for a long and relaxed meal. The phrase at the table is a term of identification and friendship. In that culture, when you had a meal with someone, you were saying, I accept you and identify with you. To eat from the same loaf of bread was to join yourself to the person that you're eating with. While his networks and friends and acquaintances were eating nachos and cheese <laughs> and watching the bears get back on track, as he looked around the room, he sees Peter talking to two publicans. Bring it on, Pete. And there's John over there. Go for it. And then he sees Jesus with a whole crowd of people around him as he calls more people to follow him. Levi was so happy that he almost laughed out loud. That night was just the beginning. And being a tax collector, he was, he was good with pen and paper. And for the next three years, he recorded what he saw and heard of Jesus. And his writings became known as the Gospel of Matthew. He followed the Savior. And the Savior focused on sinners, and so did he. He had a heart for the lost, his lost friends, and the guts to try to reach them, friends. That's the story of Levi, known as Matthew. Some of the most effective evangelists are brand new Christians. They still have lots of sinners in their life, and they can't stop talking about what Jesus has done for them. Over time, zeal can evaporate, and connections with non-Christians are replaced with new friendships with, with, which are Christians. In one sense, this is good and healthy. And some of us do need to sever unhealthy relationships. But on the other hand, we, we need to make sure we don't insulate ourselves from the very people Jesus wants us to reach. God has put us where we live on purpose for his purposes. So remember when you're reading Matthew, you are reading the scum of the earth tax collector that gave it up to change the world for Jesus. Truly, what a friend we have in Jesus. Jesus loves sinners, and I guess that that includes Levi and everybody. Let's pray. Oh God, thank you for the story of Levi. We thank you, Lord, that you minister uh, to us and that you change us. The story of Levi 
also known as Matthew, is such a great transformation story. You took this person and you said for you for him to follow you, and he did. And because of that, the book of Matthew is in Holy Scripture. And Lord, we thank you for what you did through Matthew. We thank you through, for, for what you did through this tax former tax collector. Lord, help us to be people that recognize your desire to reach the lost. Help us to be evangelists to them. Help us to love them into the kingdom. And friend, if you're away from God right now, I want to lead you in prayer. Please pray this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I ask you to come into my life and be my Savior and be my God. Be the Lord of my life. I acknowledge that you rose from the dead and that you are God. And I give myself to you to be used by you. Help me to walk away from things that are displeasing to you, things that are sin in my life. Help me to walk away from those and help me to become the person that you want me to be. Lord, build in me a new person, a new creation. Thank you for hearing this prayer. Thank you, thank you for allowing me to come into the kingdom and family of God. In Jesus' name, I pray this prayer. Amen. Well, friends, if you prayed that prayer and you meant it, God heard it, and he welcomes you into the family of God. And he's forgiven you of all your sins, and he's not only forgiven you of them, he's forgotten them. And he has exchanged your sin Move that away, wash that away by the blood of Jesus, and he has replaced it with his righteousness. So now you are pronounced right, righteous as Jesus is. And so if you were to die today or any day in the future, as long as you continue to serve the Lord, <laughs> the righteousness of God is what gets you into heaven because that is now placed on you, the righteousness of Jesus. Well, God bless you. Aren't you glad that Jesus loves everybody? And that means you and me. And may we continue to represent him and love on people. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, God bless you, folks. Have a great week in the Lord, and we will see you next week. Uh, and remember to share God's love with people. This is Pastor David Childers from Las Vegas, Nevada. Take care. I want to tell you about some uh, opportunities you can have with our school and our preschool. Building Blocks Preschool is an amazing preschool open to children ages 12 months to 12 years. Character building and biblical values are very important to our Christian curriculum. Our staff is fully trained and committed to serving our families with excellence in all areas. And we will be accepting this year stay-at-home students ages 5 through 12 this coming school year. So if your child cannot go to his regular school and you need to go to work, then you, you have an opportunity to enroll your child into our child care. COVID-19 protocols are in place to make sure that we keep our staff and children safe. Contact our director, Shirley, at 725 219 8866 or call the preschool number 702-873-7340. We enroll children receiving Urban League assistance and we are reopening Monday, June 29th, 6 a.m. 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And we are looking forward to speaking to you about enrolling your child. Spring Valley Christian Academy is a fully accredited Christian school in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, we are taking children uh, in grades kindergarten through eighth. We teach a biblical worldview, and we encourage our students to excel in every area of their lives. 
We provide a wholesome, loving, and safe atmosphere for our students. We strive to be the place where the truth of Scripture becomes life-defining qualities of our kids' personal character. Our projected start date for the school year is August the 10th, 2020. We have COVID-19 protocols in place and scholarship, scholarships are accepted through AAA and Dinosaur and Roses. If you're interested, please call the school 702-873-3216 or Pastor Madeline, our principal at 702-460-3210.